Hello, everybody. We're just going to give everyone a minute or so to join in. While we're waiting for everyone, go ahead and post where you're watching the class from. Um, there won't be any worksheet this week. Okay. Um, I see lots of people coming from all over the state of California and some coming from all over the country and even around the world, which, and it's really wonderful to have you join us. Um, welcome to the second class in our series. And today we will be covering rotating birds and John will tell you a little bit more about that. But um, this class is celebrating the beginning of Latinx Heritage Month. So we're actually going to be drawing birds from all over uh, Central and South America. Um, so, right, before we get started, I'll just go ahead and remind everyone that, um, you know, John works very hard on these classes and we're providing them all to you for free. So if you wanna support John, go ahead and head on over to his website and buy his book. I'll go ahead and drop the links in the chat. Um, and also, if you can, go ahead and support Audubon. I'll let John take it away. Thank you so much, my friends. And it's good to have you back with us today. This is gonna be good stuff. When I started drawing birds, I, a lot of my kind of, a lot of the things I was looking at were, were pictures and field guides. And those were all, profile shots of all the birds. And so I drew a lot of profile pictures. I actually had the idea in my head that you're supposed to draw profile pictures of birds. I don't know why. But um, my challenge was I would be out there trying to draw the side view of the bird, but the bird would be doing this, right? It wasn't a profile. It was doing something else or it'd be facing towards me. All right, so then you have to wait until the bird moves so you can draw it or you can look at the bird and try to draw it from the side while looking at the front, that's not gonna work out very well. And then <clears throat> I spent some time with bird artist Keith Hansen when I was a teen. And this guy opened up all these ideas for me. And all of a sudden these birds were just you know, pointing in all these different directions and rotating around. And it's been really, really, really fun ever since. So I'm gonna be showing you some strategies and techniques to get away from just that profile view. And you will be able to, you can keep the body in profile and you can turn the head or you can turn the body at all sorts of different angles. And so you can have heads and tails and bodies. And what, what's gonna happen is the birds are going to, um, we'll get a better view of this in here. Um, um, you're going to get just so much more life into your birds when you can turn them around at all these different angles. So I think you're gonna find that this is a lot of fun. And it's gonna, uh, but there, there's a few kind of foreshortening challenges. So what we're going to do to get started is we're going to look at the basketball with tape on it. 
right? And this ball is going to teach us some really, really cool things about surprising things that lines do, straight lines do, when they wrap around a sphere. And then we're going to be changing that into an egg. And then we're going to be applying all those ideas to birds. And um, that is going to be fun. All right, now, um, so I've taken two pieces of tape and um, I've got them there at just crossing over at right angles on the basketball. Now, if I, it's kind of, let's see, if I hold it at the right, ah, there he is. It's, see that X? Two straight lines across the ball, right? Now, what I want you to do is start to watch, let's see, there we, okay, let, uh, let me see. Okay, I'll get one up, one down. No. Nope. It turns out when you're looking in the mirror, in the reversed image in your screen, and you're trying to make a little adjustment on this, it's flipped. So it's, 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 it's kind of, a, it's a brain twister for me to be able to turn this, the angles that I want. All right, okay, here we go. Now I'm gonna try this again. Uh, no, 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 ah, there we go. Now notice that as, as I, no, ah, there we go. As I rotate the ball here, I'm turning it up. So, no, 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 come back. I want one to stick, ah, <laughs> this is pretty funny. All right, we'll try this again. Um, two straight lines, all right? And if I, <laughs> there we go. Um, if I turn it on one axis, one of them stays straight, the other turns into a curve. Look at that nice sort of crescent moon shape across it. And notice that as that, oh, no, come back here, there we go. At, there we go, as, Uh, there's just like spatial reasoning things here that are messing with my head. Um, all right, so as I, how hard can that be? All right, so as I get it, uh, so notice that when it's a little bit, when, when, th when not this line, when the other line, the one that goes across by my nose, um, is a little bit off the center, you see a slight curve, right? If it is right in the middle, it's straight. And if it is close to the edge, there's a big crescent curve across the top, right? Now, the same is true of that both of these lines work the same way. So as, as straight lines go across a sphere, the ones that are pointing straight towards you, you're going to see these ones up down. And as it turns, then you're going to get increasing amounts of curve. But wait, there's more. Let's actually first get this into our, our, our notes. What I'm going to do is I am going to share a screen with you. Uh, last time, last time we had a little bit of difficulty with some, with some focus on the screen. So today I'm going to be drawing on a tablet so that everybody should be able to see this crystal clear. You don't have to be able to draw a perfect circle, but I'll show you a trick which will make your circles a lot better. All right, what I'm going to do is I am going to just sort of start drawing lightly. So you see that's not a perfect circle. All right, and then I draw over that. I'm going to kind of pooch it out more over here. All right, and then I'm going to draw more heavily on top of that. And that's, that's much better, right? So here's my sphere. And if I have a, I'm gonna draw a straight line right through the middle of it. And if I am rotating this basketball, that line that is straight towards you is going to start to curve a little bit. 
And then I rotate it some more. That line is going to start to curve a little bit more. I rotate it a little bit more and that line rotates, curves out even more. And if I rotate it even more, that line is right along the edge of the basketball. Right. So I've got line one, line two, line three. And let's put those in on the other side as well. The more you get out towards the edge, the more those lines are going to curve out. All right. Now, the same is true on the other axis. So if there is a line that cuts through the middle of the ball this way, let's arch it up. And so we kind of go point to point. So draw along with me and get, we're all gonna kind of create this shape. There we go. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we want to kind of generally get these, these two things going across. So again, looking at the basketball, um, a line that is in the middle, as it gets closer to the edge, it becomes more curved. And a line that goes straight down the middle of the basketball is a straight line. And it doesn't matter which way you rotate that ball. Now, I'm going to choose two of these lines. All right. And they could be any two lines. All right, I am going to pick this one here. And let's choose this one here. Jack, someone in the comments is asking if they're supposed to be drawing the basketball with you. Yes, I, I would say, you don't have to draw the basketball, but I would make this shape. I would make, follow along, try to make this shape. Um, this is a, uh, there, there's going to be a lot of very cool stuff that is going to come from playing with, playing with this shape together. All right, so you see what I've done here is I've just taken my ball, I put this grid across it, and I've, I chose two lines. If I get rid of everything else, pull that over here. Here's my ball, see not a perfect sphere, but that's okay. And there are those two lines. Again, I got those two lines by just those are just two arcs across this, this ball. And, and these could be, you know, if, if you're, you know, this could be turned any which way. You see it's still those two, still those two lines. What I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be creating a new drawing here where I'm going to have 
um, I'm going to draw the poles of this ball. So by the pole, I mean the place where the two lines cross. That's say our north pole. This is our southern pole down here, All right? Um, so I have this little pole where those two lines meet. I want to think of how, and here, here's where the, the, the game really begins. We're going to really take a close look here at how curved lines, or sorry, straight lines change their angles as they wrap around a ball that's at a little bit more of an interesting angle than this straight up side one. And how, <clears throat> how lines that go around the ball will change their shape at higher latitudes of the ball. So we've got latitude and longitude lines. Um, so we're going to start with these, these, these longitude lines. Um, now, take a look at this. All right, I'm going to turn it. Can, uh, hey, Mark, can you see the, the basketball in the little inset picture? You can, though if you want to focus on the ball, I would say turn off the screen share. All right. Um, so what I just want, want people to notice on this is that when I hold it this way, you see the big X, right? And um, a line that comes down the middle of the ball here, you see this line coming through the middle, right, um, is straight. As it wraps around the top, you see it as a short straight line coming down the middle of the ball is a long straight line. So that's coming off of the poles. Let's add that line into this. So at first of this, you're like, come on, I want to draw birds here. Why are we drawing these spheres with lines on them? It's really going to help, right? So just bear with me. We're going to wrap a few more lines around these. And um, then we are going to be good to go. All right, so let's give this a try right here. So, so the line that is going to come straight towards you here, it's going to cross through that little spot in the middle. And on the far side, it's going to look straight. On this side, look at that. All right. So, now, this one is coming straight. This one is coming curved around to here. If there were to be a line somewhere between those, it would be not as curved as this one on top and not as straight as this one on the bottom. So somebody in between there would be doing something kind of in between. Similarly, going off this direction here. Not quite as curvy as this. All right, so what I'm doing, and follow along with this if you can, is I'm putting in some lines in between those. And you don't have to draw it with one perfect got it line. These can be sort of scratchy. We're just sort of figuring our way around those shapes. And, oh boy, you've got a beach ball now. So notice how, um, yeah, there we go. Notice how, um, where are, there it is. This, this line here, notice how as it gets over to this side here, look at how it sort of is straight and at the, towards the end, towards this end, it seems to be kind of taking in a little bit more of a curve. Can you see that? So the line seems to be going, whoops, come on, there we go. So it's curving across the ball and at the very end over here, 
it goes zoop down with a little bit more of a hook of a curve. So you're seeing that right in here. Where did I put down my pen? There it is. All right, so the lines seem to kind of come down straight and then towards the end, you'll see a little bit more of a curve, sort of coming wrap around this and then whoop, right down into there. All right. <clears throat> so there is, there's my um, one set of lines. What I want to do now is to take a look at if I am looking from the pole here and I go out the, a, a, a distance. If I were looking straight down on this globe, I would be, if I walked out a certain distance and then went around in a circle, I'd be making a perfect circle. But here, if I walk out a little bit along this globe and I were to walk at a, um, a certain distance across, I would end up with something that from your angle would look like a straight line going across. If I then walked a few more miles down the globe and kept that same distance from the, um, from the pole, I would be tracing what, from this angle what would appear to be a straight line going across the globe. But if I'm looking at this three quarter view, so from the top, it's a circle, from the side, it's a straight line, from an angle, it's going to be an ellipse. So in here, I'm going to have an ellipse. As I go further out, there's going to be a bigger ellipse. And the side of that is going to kind of get lost as it tucks around the globe here. So look at this little area right here. See, I'm up in this zone right here. I'm gonna take my line and I'm gonna hook it in. It's making, it hooks in more here because it's foreshortened going away from you. Coming around here. We're gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna hook up into it here. I'm gonna curve around the ball. And I'm gonna hook up in there. So this line, notice that it, it's not your, if I follow this curve all the way along here, a lot of people would expect it to sort of keep the same curve like this, but it doesn't. It hooks in around the globe. So these kind of drawing the latitude and longitude lines around a sphere is an awesome doodle for you just to practice. If you practice just, I'm gonna make a sphere, all right? Um, I'm going to make a sphere and then put in those longitude and, um, and latitude lines. You can make your sphere point any direction you want. All you have to do to get a sphere with a different direction would be, you could come back to this little diagram here. If you, oops, if you had chosen this one and this one, so not a perfect top view, right? You would get a different diagram All right, so you can play with this. Use this initial grid to choose two lines. Use that to make a sphere with a pull, an axis, and then wrap longitude and latitude lines around it. Mess with this just as you're, you're sitting listening to the telephone. <clears throat> do, 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 make this doodle. Right, and then do one with it, the axis pointing off in a different direction. It could be here, it could be here, a lot of, and you're going to develop an intuitive sense for how latitude and longitude lines wrap around a sphere. <clears throat> if you get this, taking your bird and rocking it at any angle and wrapping its plumage around it, 
is going to be so much easier. So speaking of birds, I know that's why you're here. Let's go to something that's a little bit closer to a bird, and then we're going to get full on into birds. All right. Now, <clears throat> let's, all right, before I had something, um, let's kind of block this in with a little bit of blue. Before I had something that was more round, this time I'm going to intentionally make it a little bit more egg shaped. All right, so I've got my little round end. And I'm gonna egg it up in here. And I'm going to draw another little egg. Here. So I've got myself my two eggs. All right, two eggs or stones. Um, I am going to wrap some contour lines around these. And as I do in one of them, um, I am going to have this end be the side that is closest to you. Right, so in one point, this one, in this one here, this end is going to be pointing towards you. In this one here, this end is going to be pointing towards you. So if I were to put a little pole through this here, right, <clears throat> that pole would come out there. That pole is going to come out here. All right, so if those are There's my two little legs. Now, um, so what I'm going to be seeing here on this one is that if here is a little ellipse that I can draw around the top of this, and then here is a little bit more of an ellipse. See how I'm hooking this in here? I don't want the line to come into the edge like that. I want it to hook around. All right. Hooking that around there. And if I had, so those are my little latitude lines. If I have my longitude lines, one goes straight down like that. One going from here out here is going to wrap around here. And one coming more this way, close to the edge. On the back side, it would be an oval in here. I'd be making a big C coming around like this. Follow along and see if you can make this, this egg too. <clears throat> so like a big C curving around here, hooking it in more. And if I have my lines on my other axis, those see this line here, it doesn't come all the way down. You think it's going to hit here, but there's 
the other side is turned away from here. Behind the scenes, it's coming over into there. Use that one there. All right. So this is <clears throat> this little exercise with the egg just takes that idea of the sphere and it's going to get you something just that's a little bit closer to what you're seeing in the regular kind of body forms with that you'll be seeing in birds. What we're now going to do is we're going to jump over to some photographs of birds and analyze these about how we would think about them three-dimensionally and then start to construct them in space. All right. Jack, before so, you switch over, there was a yes. question from Ron that I think would be pretty good to clarify. So he was asking, shouldn't all the longitude lines be sort of drawn towards the poles? And I think yes. the sort of rotating thing you were explaining um, is important. So, so no, he's, he's absolutely right. So on this end, you see it. This comes and it, it hits the pole. But on this side, the pole is actually connecting out of your view at a point about there, right? And so what you're, what's, what's going on, or imagine if I took this and I, and I turned it even more so that you had, you know, here, here is your one pole up here and we're kind of wrapping around here. <coughs> It's a really good question because you're thinking this line here, it, 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 this, why does this go to here and instead of going to there? Because on the underside down here, this is where that pole exits out here. It is doing this out of our view on the underside. So it's actually, you're not seeing where the other side is connecting to the ball. So this line that comes straight through the middle, it is going to go down this way and out of our view, it wraps around the other side to there. But this line that is coming here, it's coming down and it wraps, it goes out of our view here and behind the scenes, it's continuing to curve around like that to there. And this one here is going out of our view here Right, this one here just went out of our view, but it's really continuing on down around behind the scenes and doing that. See that all this travel right here is on the other side of the egg. And so we don't see this part and we don't see this part. So that's why this, you're going like, why is that line coming to this point here. Well, it is actually continuing on out of your line of sight to this spot here. So it went down there and it's wrapping around on the other side of the egg. Hey, look, it's a bird. See, I told you there would be birds. Didn't I tell you there would be birds? There will be birds. And now you guys are ready for the birds. Um, so this is a really cool bird. This is a toady mot mot. And just say that, toady mot mot, because it's toady mot mot. And you don't get to say toady mot mot very often, but today you get to say toady mot mot. There's actually gonna be some um, birds down here <clears throat> with some really cool names. Toady mot mot is one of them. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be constructing toady mot mot's head and body and thinking of those as, as not a flat shape. But when you're three-dimensionally moving your bird around, this is where you want to be, um, this is where we're going to be really thinking three-dimensionally. So all this stuff with eggs and, and things like that, very, very helpful in, in getting ourselves to start to think three-dimensionally. So let's, let's go for Toadie Mot Mot. See down here, 
Todi Montmont, you're seen um, as a side view, right? And um, let's see what we're seeing in this side view. So down here, Todi Montmont, all right? The front of the head is more or less flat. The back of the head is a curve, okay? So let's hide that line and we can all agree flatter in the front, well, maybe a little bit of a little dip in. All right, so that's our Todi Motmot from the side. Todi Motmot from the front, the head has this kind of Apollo 11, you know, Apollo mission lunar um, sort of command module shape to it. Um, so there is, from the front, oh, actually, let's do it on this one right down here. It's an even better front view. Look at this. So I'm going to draw a line through the eyes here. Behind the, below the eyes, the head fans out over the auriculars, those ear patches. So here is this triangle kind of going out on the bottom of the head. And on the top, we're coming up. And look at that kind of command module or, or hat shape. So it comes down and then out. All right. Now, our eyes and our beak are attaching right here along that, that line between them. So that means if that we were to project that back on this bird here, boom, 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 what you'd be seeing is that this whole plane of the face right in here would be rocked out towards you. And then you'd be going up in a different plane right in there. Ooh, check that out, right? So now, Let's take a look at this bird right here and notice what is going on with it. Remember we had a flatter front before, a flatter front and a curve back. We see, um, and then over here, we have cheeks that angle out, right? So over here in this, you're seeing a little bit of the cheek that angles out. And then on the back, you're seeing the curve back of the head. So it's still a curve in the back, but you're seeing a little bit of that. Um, and let's sort of draw in this, right? So um, if, if we have kind of a plane here, right, this, is this plane that is coming out here. Um, we have the side of our head that is coming straight up. And back here is another plane that is rocking back like this. So let's draw this in kind of diagram form off here on the side of the page, All right? I have uh, my head is going to be roughly in here. My eye beak line, actually I'm going to have it kind of coming up a little bit. My beak is going to be occupying this area here. And below that beak, I'm coming, I can see a little bit of an angle down. And right here, where my, um, right in here is a really important point because what I'm seeing here is that my beak is coming not to the edge here. The head isn't coming up like that. No, 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 no. The head is actually wrapping around this side here of the head. So I'm seeing a little bit of the head coming up here and then it comes over and then it is wrapping down. And 
if I, I find it's very helpful also just to give myself a little bit of a line right in there, just to help me keep track of here is actually the middle of my head. So the beak is attaching not, not on the side sticking out like this, but the head wraps around here. And then I have that going on. So my head coming down here, the eye is pretty big on a little toady mot mot here. And I'm also, this photographer is about at the same height of the bird, so that the kind of the line of where the neck attaches to the body, it is, it's pretty flat across here. We're looking pretty straight across here. Um, but since I'm seeing a little bit of the top of the head, I'm just going to give this a slight curve like that. So that I want to think of this head attaching across a slight little curve. That just is going to help me think of this as a rounded shape fitting into another rounded shape. Now, that is those are some of our kind of essential things for, for constructing our little toady mop mop. Um, for patterns on the face and the head, you want to think of things, sort of lines, um, imagine the pole of the basketball being right where the beak is, and lines wrapping around the head from there. So I would imagine a line coming up the forehead and back like this. I would imagine another one kind of coming out the side. This is the one where you're kind of looking more at the side of it. If you're looking slightly down on the head, then you'll kind of get a little bit of a hook around the end there. If there was another one coming down this way, here, another thing that's going to be helpful is for me to think of if the middle of my beak is here, the projection of the middle of that throat is going to be coming right down there. Let's take these same ideas and apply them to the white-eared jacamar. Here's the white-eared jacamar. Isn't that a cool looking bird? Kind of makes you want to go to Ecuador. Right, so here's our little white-eared jacamar. And um, first, uh, before we're kind of looking at rotating the head, we see a bunch of kind of cool things going on with that, that here. Um, we also are going to be taking a look at rotating the body. So notice that the white-eared jacamar likes to likes to sit at. Oh, your classes are about to start. Yes. Thank you for joining me. All right. Um, white-eared jacamar. Um, the body. And the side view here is sitting about at an angle like this. All right. Now, if you can see my pen in the little screen, um, what I'm going to do is I am going to rotate, keeping the pen at the same angle. And you see how as I rotate from this angle, my pen is clearly, uh, say, at a 45 degree angle. But as I rotate my chair, keeping my hands at the same angle, my pen becomes more and more vertical. So if I'm looking at a bird that's sitting at an angle from, um, from the front, even if it's sitting at an angle, I'm going to see its body as, as a vertical. So in the front view, my bird's posture is straight up. And look at this over here in the three-quarter view. Oh, wow. 
it is it is not as vertical as this it's not as tilted as the side one and it's just it's a happy medium um, between those two so if the ball of my bird's body is sitting tilted I want to be aware that as I'm going to draw it now, I'm going to be putting it at more of a, a vertical angle. So if I'm, let's look at this one right here. A great way of kind of doing this is you want to look at what is the angle right behind the back and the head of that bird, about like that. Now I'm putting in the, the, the ball of the head. And as I, and put, um, as I'm starting to think about what the body is going to do, I want to remember that that body is sitting at, at an angle that is really vertical. Now, I, I find that when I sort of explain it and diagram it, it's easy for me to kind of keep track of that idea. But when I'm out in the field sketching, if I know that a bird is sitting at an angle like this, it is really difficult for me to kind of in my, the part of my brain goes like, no, that kind of posture is going to be wrong. It's got much more of a lean to it. But if I'm looking more at the belly view of this bird, that's going to be exactly what I see. So, um, So let's see, where are we? Um, oh yeah, our, our friend, the, 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 the Jack and Mar. Let's think about how we can construct on top of this little Jack and Mar shape and, and get something that's gonna sort of feel three-dimensionally like this one in the top left, All right? I'm gonna get myself a little bit of All right, so I'm gonna start off just giving myself an angle behind my bird. And this is gonna be very similar to the approach which we took in our, in our previous classes, we're constructing the bird, but you're gonna see that now what we're gonna do is there's gonna be a part in this where we overlay it with some really intentional three-dimensional thinking, All right? So then, Here's the ball for my head. And here's going to be my eye beak line. My bird's gonna look out this way. Now, I love that negative shape on the far side of the body. Um, and that's gonna come out and down and back. And so that means that my my body is going to occupy this kind of area in here. I'm going to have a branch somewhere in there. And the tail seems to be in line with the rest of this. I notice that the tail is sort of a step in, so I'm going to step in. Now let's think 3D. If you look here on this lower Jacamar, you can see a little seam on its chest right in here. Birds have feathers that attach on this side and feathers that attach on this side. Up here across the upper chest, they attach all the way across. But down here, especially on the lower chest, there's actually a big bear zone right in here and feathers will fluff over to meet that line. So if you look on this, you can see a little bit of that center line. Now let's see on this bird here, I can see a little bit of fluff sticking out here, a little bit of fluff sticking up here. Right in here, 
is the center line between those two little belly fluffs. So a very useful line is the one, sort of the bird zipper line that is gonna go right up here. It's gonna go from down under the throat, out over here. Where is the line of this bird zipper? So on this, I'm gonna sketch in my zipper line. Now for my head, I want a, um, I want my, 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 my head and my beak to kind of make sense in an attachment. One way of doing this to kind of get a big beak like this to attach into your head is to think of if you took the beak off, if you snip the beak off, what is the shape of the hole that would be left in the side of the bird's head? And you're gonna draw that onto the surface of the bird. So this is actually where the beak is attaching into the head. So um, on this little bird, it's gonna be somewhere along this center, little center line here. There's my center line. And it is going to be, so somewhere kind of broad in there like that. So I'm gonna come from an area like that. And then the upper bill is going to come from that, from the, the top of that, the lower bill from the bottom of that. And there's my little kind of a placeholder for my eye. Another thing that is useful to do in this three quarter view is to think of the forehead of the bird as a big flat plane. So on this one that's looking towards you here, you see this little kind of mohawk zone sticking out here. On this bird here, here's this little mohawk zone. I want to think of that as a, as a little flat plane sticking up. It also can help you to think of the chin area, the throat area as a flat plane coming down on either side of that central throat line. So I'm turning my bird into a little bit more of a cubist shape, but this is just helping me kind of visualize sculpting around it. Then what I can do is once I've got some of that geometry worked out, I then can start drawing details on top of it. And I'm doing that on top of a structure that already kind of makes sense. So I can now come in here and say, all right, you know, here is, here's my little eye of my little friend. The beak is coming in here. We talked about before about the line of the beak not having it reach all the way to the end. Take a look at this bill. See how it's hard to see that little suture of the beak all the way out to the end. It looks much more cartoonish if you draw it in all the way to the end. Lower bill has a little hook down and then your, there's a sort of place up in here for throat feathers to stick up in and the back side of the bill is coming out a little bit and up. The real serious business starts when we start putting in this forehead. And there, then I'm gonna just sort of wrap around the back side of the head. This bird has a little bit of an ear patch, auricular feathers. There's a malar zone, little throat. And think about, watch this, watch this next little line. This is gonna kind of help me just sort of continue to think about this three-dimensionally. I'm thinking about this throat coming down and connecting three-dimensionally into this whole body. 
and here is the feathers on the other side. So see how that, just having that line in there helps me think of that head sitting down onto the volume of this, of this little body. So the breast feathers are nice and fluffy. Now, in three-quarter views, we're not going to be drawing a big portrait of the wing. The wing is turned away from us. It becomes more difficult to see the edges of individual feathers. And the wing starts to look a little bit more like a lump. So um, I have a tendency, because I've spent all this time like studying the wing, I want to get in there and draw it. Like, where are my primaries? Where are my secondaries? Where are the coverts? Like, where are my medians? All that sort of stuff. But on, on this kind of a view, you know, you might have some sort of a hint that you've got coverts in there, and then there's a little lump of a wing. And if you get in there and you start drawing in all this detail on this shape that is foreshortening away and curving around around the backside of your critter, it's going to tend to really flatten out your drawing because you're putting all this detail into a part that is further in the background. And when you put all that detail in, it visually pulls that into the foreground. So these feathers, these, these clumps of feathers that are kind of wrapping around the sides of the body, we are going to acknowledge that wings are cool, but we don't want to get really wrapped around the axle about it. So this bird's got you know, feathers coming down here. I'm going to suggest this center line coming up the middle of the bird here. Anything that just sort of helps the viewer understand like, oh yeah, there's the middle of the bird, right? I see how your, your bird is constructed. Helps them just sort of be able to see these, these, these volumes in space. For the feet, I'm not gonna get too um, fancy with them. Keep it simple. We're on a little branch. And this little bird has a sense of feeling of, of being turned in space. Big things that help me with that feeling are being able to sort of imagine this center line here, this, the throat kind of coming out, this little box right in here. So again, seeing that as a little plane, seeing that as a center line, seeing this as the sort of front facing angle. And then my side of my body takes up most of the real estate in here, and I'm not getting overly zealous with drawing in a wing. It's a very much hidden from me. So that really helps me turn my jacamar. We're going to do one last little study here with a sooty capped bush tanager. Um, and take a look at these photographs here. And what I'd like you to do is to look at them and on them visualize are there any kind of clear planes that you would use. Now a plane means a surface of a body that is, is facing in, in, in some direction, like the forehead can be a surface plane, a, a, a sort of a flat. So imagine an ice cube, a cube, each one of those surfaces is a plane. On these birds, yes, that body is rounded, but 
if you were to kind of turn it into a more cubist angular bizarro bird, then where would you plop your planes in? The next time you have a little bit of free time and you have, does anybody get Birding Magazine or Audubon Magazine? You ought to be getting Audubon Magazine. There's some really great bird photographs in those. Now, I know that a lot of people, um, a lot of people uh, donate those magazines to hospitals and things when they're done. But if your magazine just goes into the recycling bin, before you recycle your magazine, or the next time you get a little flyer, a little mailing, and there's a picture of a bird, what you want to do is to um, let's take that bird photograph and think about it in terms of planes and surfaces. Um, here we go. So this little guy in front of me here, take a look at that. Can you see, um, well, let's first put in a center line on this bird, All right? It's gonna come down here. It's gonna come out a little bit onto the front of this fluffy chest, and then it's gonna wrap down and under. Now, Let's put in some other kind of lines of sort of for the ball of the head here. Um, where is that center, that center line's coming up over the forehead? Okay. If we come out from an angle from that here, here is, right, so here is, just like lines on a sphere, here are those lines wrapping around the head, but notice them kind of coming up at a little bit more of a steeper angle on the forehead. And if we were to wrap lines around the other way, you can start to really think of these birds as, as little kind of cubist robots, right? Um, drawing over photographs that otherwise are just going to be recycled, there's no stress, no pressure. It's a great exercise to help you be able to visualize these, these turning planes. Let's take one of these birds and construct it. Maybe this little one right down here on the bottom. Let's try that. So if I were to draw that bird, I would start just by getting the angle of the back and the head here, which you see is a fairly fairly straight line. And then I would put in a ball for the head and figure out which way my bird is looking, generally out this way. And then I would look at the negative space underneath the throat. See how it kind of comes and it pooches out here. So I just kind of get a little bit of that to help me then be able to put in that ball there. The wings start somewhere in here in the body. And come back like that. The tail is out at an angle like that. A little bit of an angle underneath the 
the body here, body here, kind of coming down to a point in here, little leg, that's too far forward, better leg. So this is very similar to what, um, the, so just, just sort of the standard, let's draw a bird. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna think 3D on this. So <clears throat> we are now going to change our color. And let's envision on this bird where its center line is. So on the front, the center line of the throat is coming down here and the center line then comes up over the middle of the head between those white stripes and disappears over there. All right. So I'm going to have a little center line in here. I'm going to have a center line that comes up and drops down back there. Now let's think about center line for the back of the bird. All right, I see this wing over here, I see this wing over here, where they meet right back here is the middle of this bird's back. And so this bird's back comes up here, the head is turned away from that. So here's the middle line of the back. And I have then these uh, and the middle line of the tummy is, we probably can't see it from here. It's going to be some wrapped, wrapped around there. So I'm not going to put in the middle line of the tummy. So on my bird back here, somewhere back in here is the line in the middle of my bird's back. Now I'm going to block in the locations of the back feathers and the wings. And this bird is holding its wings fairly symmetrically. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna think of some sets of parallel lines. I call these parallel guides. And when you're not doing just a straight side view and you've got more, perhaps more of a back view, then being able to find these parallel guides is very useful in being able to kind of orient your, um, your wings. So look at this, here's the center of the line going back perpendicular to that. Here is the top where the wings are starting back here. Here's my secondary feathers in here. So my secondary feathers are going to be parallel with this. And the tips of my primary feathers are going to be parallel with that, kind of coming in here. Actually, let me take a closer look here. Seeing that my tail feather is at an angle like this, if, what if I carry that angle over? Yeah, that's better. Tips of my feathers there, tips of my secondaries there. Okay. Yeah, what I want is I want these lines all to be parallel with each other. If it's holding its tail straight with its, its body. And so now when I'm drawing in the wing, let's actually add these on here. So I'm going to have a base of a tail in here. Somewhere in here is going to be the base of my wing tips and the ends of my secondaries and the top of my wing in here. So those are these little parallel guides. Now, when I go in to draw my bird, I have secondary feathers, secondary feathers that are taking up kind of a block in here. I'm gonna have primary feathers that are coming down here. On the far side, my secondary feathers, where did I put that other wing in? Well, these parallel guides show me, let's keep that wing over there as a little blob 
in there. There's my secondaries. And what about my primaries? Well, don't have them come out any further than that because of that little parallel guide. And feathers across the back are going to come in here. Then we're going to swing across there and wrap around the other side of my body. My tail is going to come out and the tip of it I'm going to put along this line here. And the result is that I get a tail that fits with these wings and this body. If I did my tail tip this way, see what's going wrong here? I've got all these pieces angled this direction. And now, if I'm not really thinking about the relationship of wings and tail, I can have my tail coming out this way. I can draw a very nice little tail in here. But I really want it to be parallel like that. So that's going to help me be able to block those, those features onto the bird. Um, let's think about the beak here from a little area in here. And then I have a throat that comes down. I'm going to draw that big throat in as a big angular plane. I'm going to draw the same with its forehead. Check this out. There's this big angular forehead. And the little eye is going to be back in here. Just a quick time check. We have about 15 minutes left. Excellent. Thank you. On the back of the head, I'm going to curve this around here. And you see how that gets this bird just looking out towards you instead of looking sideways. Critical parts are this part of the head wrapping in on that side of where that beak is drawn in. And here is, remember those on the spheres, those lines that kind of curve in like that. Look back here on this little drawing on the bottom. Look at this. See how that hooks up into there? That really gets you looking down on the bird. So that little, that little hook. So those, those contour lines around the spheres, thinking like how how would something how would something wrap like that? It's going to be wonderful to help you be able to draw your birds. Let me just sort of show you. Um, I'm going to make a little mistake here. So if I've got my belly of my bird here, and you see how the middle of the throat's coming down here. So if I draw in that little center line coming up here to meet that, it's not going to work. And the reason it's not going to work is because you're not seeing that, you don't see it in this picture, because here you're looking at the back of the bird, you would not see the back of the bird and that belly center line at the same time. So this is, this is all just the side of the bird, the back of the bird is out of your view. Let's see. And we've got 
time for just looking at, at one more one more kind of um, let's see which ones you want to do the Inca J or the turquoise let's do let's do the Inca J here all right um, what I want to do is just show you a few lines that will help me kind of keep track of this bird's geometry. If I look on the back, the, I'm seeing the, the place where these wings come together. Here's a nice little landmark on the back of the Inca J. Um, right here where these wings come together. So the dividing line between those wings coming down here, here's the middle of my back. And then I'm not going to follow that middle line up because the bird's head is turned so I get more of a profile view of the head. Let's see what is if there are any other kind of um, angles here that can help me. Let's put in some parallel guides. Do you see the tips of the primaries here rather short primary feathers, and they're at an angle like that. Here are the tips of the secondary feathers. See where the last green one is here? They're parallel. And down here is the tip of the tail parallel with those. So if I want to think of um, the the geometry of this bird's back. Let's just block that in. Um, When I start to put in these, these, these wings, this center line becomes really, really important. So I'm definitely going to include my center line on this picture. And I have top of the wings, end of the secondaries, end of the primaries, and then somewhere down here, the base of the tail. Another, actually I could even do this, look over here, look at this, here's these, the covert feathers, the upper tail covert feathers are all ending along another line parallel to that. Oh, parallel guides, you are my friends, all right? So knowing those things, as I start to get in there and draw the details on this bird, I'm going to have my, my back feathers coming down. I could put a little kind of suggestion that there's a little bit of fluffy, All right? I don't, I'm not drawing a line right up the middle of its back, but right here is where I'm gonna to get to the top of the wings. And in this area here is a big triangle of my, my secondary feathers. So if I want to draw those in, um, it's interesting, there's usually three tertials. I wonder if this one has shed out those. I'm seeing only two tertials. Um, so there's the secondaries, that's this zone on one side. And what are we seeing on the other? It's just gonna be a simple shape, but ending at the right place. Primary feathers stick down to this line and come back and on this side, come down to that same point. 
And then we have covert feathers that come down and they hit along that same line, that same angle. And from there, you've got your tail feathers. Coming around the front edge of this bird's chest, I'm gonna put in right here. You see there's a little bit of a hint of uh, fluff right in here. So just, I'm gonna tick, tick, a couple little tick marks in there, and that suggests fluff. Um, I've got covert, undertail coverts sticking up in here. Um, <clears throat> but you see how, in this case, the that center line, those parallel guides, those help me be able to carve that and sculpt that back. You're gonna have a foot coming off in this area. And then a beautifully rendered head right on top of the bird. Um, being able to rock the bird, show a little bit of the back. Be able to rock the bird, rock the bird the other way, show a little bit of its belly. Being able to have that head at an angle instead of just a straight up profile, it makes a huge, huge difference in what you are going to be able to draw and how you're going to be able to sculpt your birds. Playing with these ideas will change the bird in your head from this kind of, okay, I know how to get that silhouette. This is fundamentally thinking about this bird as a three-dimensional thing. And if you mess with this a while, you're going to be able to just take birds. And um, I remember after studying with Keith Hansen for a while, I would be lying in bed at night, my eyes closed. And what I tried to do to get myself to go to sleep is I would envision a bird and then I would start just rotating it around in my mind. So I'm envisioning the bird and rotating it around. And that's what I'd like you to start doing. And your homework project for this is um, all of these, these bird images, they all came from the website uh, birdpixel.com. It's a wonderful site for um, a really great curated photographs of lots of different birds all over the globe. Um, so I'm gonna suggest that you head over to birdpixel and get yourself, um, let's see here. Um, oh, here's, for some reason, um, I, um, <laughs> I've lost my ability to turn off my share screen. <laughs> um, but, but, but no matter, oh, there we are, hey, we're back. Hi, it's me. Um, the, uh, so what you're gonna do is you're going to go and you need to give me seven rotated birds, right? Bonus points if you have ones where you can get like the bird this way and its head this way. So look for some birds where the body is doing something other than profile and the head is doing something other than profile. And you can even have like body doing one angle, head doing another, but Start with these, the first several of these, these, these seven ones. Just keep it as just like your wireframe bird, where get your bird in there. If you're looking at the back, you're getting in some parallel guides. If you're looking at the front, you're getting a zipper, and you're getting, uh, and, and then sculpt the planes of the head. The first ones can be just left as wireframes, but towards the end, take some of these 
and develop them further, right? Um, if you, you sketch one out and you don't like your wireframe, don't develop that one, right? Um, so just give yourself permission to, to mess with these. But take seven birds and use them not as, don't think of them as like this pressure, like I've got to create this work of art. Think of them as studies, as practice. And training yourself to take these birds and rock them around in space. You take this three-dimensional understanding of the form and the planes, and you combine that with your understanding of the plumage and the feather groups, and poof, your birds are going to be flying off your page. One last word of warning. Bird with a long beak, foreshortened head, right? The length of the bird's beak in that foreshortened view will be shorter, right? So don't even like, you know, like, hey, it's a jacamar. It's got this long beak. The head is turned at a three-quarter angle. Believe the foreshortening, right? So again, foreshortening is long object turned towards you looks shorter, right? Um, so believe the foreshortening, especially on those bills. Um, there's a big tendency that I have to, on a foreshortened bird head, I know the hummingbird has a long bill. I will draw it as this long line on my paper, even though the head is foreshortened. Not you, because you're going to be ready for that, and you're going to get this. So you can absolutely do this. So just mess with it. Make some wireframes. Turn these things around, and you'll be thinking 3D. It's going to be good. All right. Thanks, John. And... Uh, before we finish off, um, please share your homework on hashtag DrawBirds2020. Um, it's really cool to see your artwork. And we will also be emailing the recording of this class and the last class to everyone who is registered for this webinar. We have time for just a few questions. Um, a lot of people were asking what kind of software and equipment you were using for this class, John. Oh, okay. Um... My, my, my software and equipment, um, I'm going to now jump over to a different view. Whoa, whoa, look at that, it's like Inception. All right, um, so this is, what you're looking at is my workspace here. Um, this is a, uh, a low cost or um, digitizing tablet. It's an XP pen digitizing tablet and they're much more affordable than the Wacom tablets. This thing works great. I'm really, really happy with it. Um, so it's an XP pen digitizing tablet. Um, it comes with a couple of little stylus pens and um, really, really terrific. The software that I'm using is, um, uh, Adobe Photoshop CS5. Um, um, I, I got the version that where you can you can buy it and just use it without having to pay monthly monthly subscription fees. And so what I do is is I just made um, a a Photoshop file, and I had folders with drawings of birds in them. And then just um, had an additional layer that I could draw on. And so I can draw over here on this, or I click a button on my pen and I can erase. And uh, so that's what I'm using to digitize. So this is the, the, the software is Adobe Photoshop. This is an XP pen digitizing tablet. And again, it's a, it's a, it's a very useful tablet and much less expensive than the, 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 the Wacom's. Awesome. And everyone, um, so we're at time or we're a little over time. So um, please join us again in two weeks time for our final class in this series, which is going to cover drawing raptors in flight. Um, so that that should be very exciting. Please buy John's book or donate to Audubon or both or everything. Um, and thank you so much for uh, taking part in this class. It was challenging subject matter, but I think it was very insightful and valuable. Yeah, yeah, and thank you folks so much for being here. Um, your support of Audubon does lots to support their conservation and their education work. 
Um, also, if you make donations on my website, it supports me and my family. And both of those are, are good things to do. If that doesn't work with your fundings and financing at this time, we want you to keep coming. We want you to keep drawing birds. Um, but if you are able to support us, it makes a big difference for us. Um, little, little amounts add up. And um, big amounts, they do too. But um, the, uh, if, you're, if you're able to, please do. And again, I want to just send a shout out to the National Audubon Society in Richardson Bay Audubon for the work that they do in bird conservation and education uh, throughout the United States and worldwide. It is really important that we connect people with nature at this time. And, um, and the, the work we, that you do, I have uh, great respect for. So thank you, thank you so much for your, um, your help and sponsorship and support of them and, uh, and, and me as well. Thank you everyone, see you in two weeks. It's been fun, everybody. <laughs>